today is an exciting day. We are going to be making, let's see if I can get out of the way, strawberry jam. I guess you can't see it. This 30 quart, whoa, this 30 quart bowl is filled with strawberries. It's not filled to the top. It's probably one third the way filled. A couple days ago, I ran to the farmer's market and picked up some local strawberries. Now in the garden, I do have a whole entire 16 by four foot bed of strawberries planted, but they aren't, they're just ending the flower stage and just starting to turn a little bit green. And I wanted to guarantee myself that I was gonna get strawberry jam this year because I didn't can any last year and it's my husband and I's favorite jam. And so I went ahead and bought myself some strawberries. This morning, I washed them all, I topped them, and I smashed them. So they're ready to go for us. I've got the whole kitchen set up and ready to go. I have my jars here, some canning lids. Every time I make jam, because I make a lot of jam when I make it, I always have two pots going at once. I actually have extra bowls back here for the sugar. I've got my sugar out. And I do have a little bit of frozen rhubarb from last year. Depending on how much strawberry jam I get, I might do some strawberry rhubarb jam as well. You just have to see how things go. The only thing I'm gonna need to get out is my actual canners and get some water boiling, but we have to make the jam first before we can do that. Now, I am gonna be making a low sugar strawberry jam. I do this because I love the flavor of local strawberries. They beat store-bought strawberries 10 to one. And when I've made this with a regular traditional sugar filled recipe, you can't taste the strawberries. It's just way too darn sweet. These local strawberries are delicious. They're way better than any strawberry you can get at the store. And I wanna make sure I can taste that flavor. So hopefully my strawberry bed will be producing enough strawberries that I could make strawberry jam from my own strawberry plants. But because the season of when you can get local strawberries in my area is pretty short, I wanted to make sure I got down to the farmer's market and picked up some strawberries so that I could guarantee myself some strawberry jam for the pantry. So let's just go ahead and get started. I've tried probably five or six different recipes and this one is by far my favorite. I will leave all the canning equipment and the recipe down in the description below. So you guys, if you want that, you don't have to try to, you know, write down what I'm doing. You'll have it down there. Just to compare the low sugar versus the regular sugar, the low sugar recipe has six cups of strawberries and four cups of sugar. So there's still a lot of sugar in this. It's not that you're trying to use artificial sweeteners or alternative sweeteners. You're still using sugar. You're just using way less. The typical full sugar recipes is about the inverse of that. It's usually about five cups of fruit and about six cups of sugar. And that's why you just really can't get that good strawberry flavor. To me at least, you really just get sugar flavor. What we're gonna do first is we're actually gonna go ahead and turn the stove on just like a medium heat. I'm gonna be doubling the recipe, so I'm gonna be doing four recipes in total and then we'll see how much fruit we have left. So that means I need to put 12 cups of strawberries in each one of these bowls. When I put the recipe down below, I'm gonna put just the single batch recipe. There's only about a fourth a cup of berries left to make four batches. So I'm not gonna be making strawberry <laughs> rhubarb jam today. I might just make some rhubarb jam because I have that rhubarb out and that's from last year and it kind of needs to be used up. Now what we're gonna do as the berries are getting warm and bubbly, I'm gonna go ahead and measure out the sugar. For a double recipe, we need eight cups of sugar. Now what we need to do is take a half a cup of sugar from the pre-measured amount and put into a bowl. And then we need to take two packets of the sure fill and mix it in with that half a cup of sugar. Now we need to take the sugar and pectin and add it to the strawberry mixture. We are gonna bring this to a roiling boil. What that means is that it's gonna be boiling so hard that when you stir it, the boils don't go away. This is gonna take a few minutes. It's already starting to get warm, but not quite there. Now I do add something that's not in the recipe and when you make jams, you need to be very careful that you follow the fruit to sugar ratio so that the jam sets but I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. This is pink Himalayan salt to each one of these. Anytime you're cooking anything with a lot of sugar, it does help if you have a little bit of salt to balance the flavor. This is pink Himalayan salt. When you're canning, you do not wanna use iodized salt. Most table salts are iodized. So pink Himalayan salt is a good option. Or you could use pickling salt or sea salt or anything like that. Just make sure it says non-iodized on it or don't add the salt at all. That's totally optional and not in the recipe. But the next thing is in the recipe and I do like to add it as well. And that's just a pat of butter. 
What the butter does is it helps with foaming. I don't really worry about foaming that much in my jam, but it just helps with it. We are now at that spot where when I stir it, it's still boiling very, very heavily. So it is time to add the sugar, the rest of the sugar. This is why I like to pre-measure everything out because then it just makes it really easy to pour it in there. You've got to get this back to a roiling boil and it has to boil for one minute. You can see how this has stopped boiling. That sugar really reduces the temperature and it does take a minute for it to get back up to a roiling boil. This one is boiling again at a roiling boil and I can't stir it away. So I set the timer for one minute and we're gonna boil this for exactly one minute. And then this one, when I saw it earlier, it wasn't quite there. So this one isn't quite there. I'm gonna let this get to a little bit more of a boil before we set the timer on this one. It's been one minute, so I'm gonna take this off the heat. While I'm waiting for the other one to boil and be finished, I'm gonna get my water on for the water bath canner. I'm actually gonna use my pressure canner for this because you can stack too high, which I've never done before, and I'm excited to try that. Now I can't find my tray thing that sits at the bottom, and that's fine. I'm kind of annoyed at myself that I can't find it, but what you can use is a clean dish towel. You don't want your jar sitting directly on the bottom because it's too close to the element. So what you can do is just take a dish towel and that'll slowly sink to the bottom. That'll help protect the jars from cracking because they're too close to the heat. This one's done. I just turned the heat off. So let's go ahead and start jarring these up. The light pink on the top is actually that foam that some people worry about. And you can spoon that off if you want, but I never worry about it. You don't get very much in each jar, so I never worry about it. I am using pint jars. I used to can my jelly and jams. I don't make jelly, I guess I like jam. In half pints. But because of the canning lid shortage that's going on right now, I don't want to can them in half pints because that would take way more lids. I'm gonna leave about a quarter inch headspace. On the stove, I do have a double batch of rhubarb jam. I'll, I'll do a whole separate video on that because it's a little bit different than the strawberry jam. But now it's time to wipe the rims on these jars. I just have a little bit of just plain distilled vinegar and a paper towel. And I just put some on there. Can you see there's a little bit of pink on there? Because I am getting some jam off around these jars. If you don't remove this, then what can happen is it, the jam, the food, there's a little bit more, the food will interrupt the seal. So this is an important step not to be skipped. You don't have to use the vinegar, I guess. You could just use water, but I find that the vinegar helps cut through the sugar. I've said it before and I'll say it again. When you're cleaning around the rims, try to feel around with your finger. You can have the paper towel there, but just feel and see if there's any chips in the rim. If there's chips in the rim, you definitely wanna make sure you switch the jars out because, because that will inhibit a seal as well. Now a lid for each jar. Once the water gets to a roiling boil, I'm gonna set the timer for 10 minutes. I've got my rhubarb jam going here, and this was what did not fit in there, so I'm just gonna let this cool completely, and then we'll stick that in the fridge, and that will just be fresh jam to eat. Make sure you check the elevation and the proper processing time where you are, because it can vary depending on the elevation that you live in. We have all of our jars out. We got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 pints, plus the pint that is in the refrigerator that wasn't quite full enough to can. I just labeled them SB 2021, and I'm gonna let these cool completely. I'll take the rings off, wipe them off if they're gunky, and throw them in the pantry. Now, obviously my husband and I can't go through all this jam ourselves because I am hoping to make some more rhubarb jam, more raspberry jam. I've got a bunch of raspberry plants out there and I'm hoping they produce well and some blueberry jam because my blueberries are looking really nice. So we can't eat all this jam, but I can give this as gifts. This makes a beautiful gift. One of my goals this year is to mostly only gift homemade things, whether that's soap, 
winter squash. I've got, I, I love to like, when it's a birthday or something, I'll open my pantry and I'll find, I've got, I have acorn squash and butternut squash and spaghetti squash. I've got all these jams and jellies. Oh, I don't make jelly. All these jams and salsas and pickled jalapenos and soaps and just whatever it might be. And so that's one of my big things that I do with these is I gift them. Now we do love to eat them. If I make pancakes or French toast or things like that, we usually don't eat syrup. We usually eat it with, eat it with jam or applesauce or things like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna watch a few more of my videos, they'll pop up right here. If you wanna see what else I have going on around the homestead this year and in the future years, go ahead and subscribe. And I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.